Hello? Well, good morning. Ooh, amen. Let us pray. Uh, Father God, thank you for everything. Thank you for you being you. Um, and thank you for letting us be a part of it. Father God, I ask that you clear everything out of our minds right now that doesn't need to be there. Um, and let us see you. Let us see what you want us to see this morning. Let us hear what you want us to hear. Um, and let us know it is truly all for your honor and your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Feels good to be up here. <sighs> thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Told myself no cry, so no more of that. Um, God's got it. If you don't hear or if you don't remember anything else from this message, God's got it. Whatever you're going through right now, God's got it. Whatever's in your head that you're thinking about, God truly has it. And those issues with the others that we don't know about, that we kind of know about, if they are in Christ, God's got it. And if they're not, that is when we come in to show them, to make sure they do know, and let the Spirit show them that God's got it. Amen? So the question is, do we believe that? When we're sitting here praising, when we're singing, what God are we saying has got it? When we say it, are we thinking God's got it or are we saying God's probably got it? I hope that God's got it. God might have it. Or God, hmm, maybe. We know he's up there. We know we believe him. We say this, but which one are we truly saying it to? God wants all of us. Are we giving him his all, even when we're praising him, even when we're talking to him? And it's not really for him. He's getting the glory. Do we know what we are saying? Because of a lot of it, what happens after depends on how we say it and how we understand it. The result will get there. God is going to have his way regardless, but the path can take a lot of different directions depending on how we understand it. What I've been trying to do lately is every message that comes, that we're, we're preaching here, just to focus on that that week. So if we're talking about forgiveness, I'm going to focus on forgiveness that week. If talking about anger, I'm going to focus on anger that week. Try not to get so much out of, I don't want to say out of touch, but thinking of so much that's going on when God lays everything in front of us and says he got it. There's no accident that you're here this Sunday. There's no accident every Sunday you're here that we're talking about this and talking about that. And if it's something that we don't think we need to be involved in, we're wrong. Because that means something is going to come up with it. All believers know there's so many times, there's, there's no coincidences. So many times that God shows this and this and this, but do we truly believe that he's got it? Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anybody wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. We can say God has it. We can say Jesus has it. He tells us to follow him. And if he can do that, we can trust him in any and everything that we are dealing with. God's got it. This isn't one of them sermons where we're done uh, Leviticus or one of them where you're like, ah, when am I going to use this? I truly believe if we can say this after every single thing, the good, the bad, it changes everything after that. It's the confidence in the statement because we know he truly's got it. So do we believe that? Do we understand it? That there's no accidents in God? <clears throat> what I've learned, if we keep doing that, every single thing that comes up, eventually you're living out something this week, and then something next week, and something next week. But you're still remembering the thing from the next week, so eventually after a couple weeks, a couple months, we're truly living out the Bible. We don't forget all of that stuff. Again, what we remember 10% of a message. We remember this. We remember that. We all understand that. But if you're focusing on this week, this week, and then the next week you're focusing on that, but that's still in the back of your mind. 
and you're focused on this and that's still in the back of your mind. It's truly trusting God for this time right now and the spirit will take over when he needs to because God's got it. Every situation is different. A lot of them are a lot easier to say, God's got this. Oh, I can kind of see a little bit what's going to happen. But what when we can't see anything? Do we truly believe he's going to have it? We have to take that first step in the tunnel so we can see a little bit of the light. But do we trust who's at the end of that tunnel? We have to remember we are here in the presence, but God is everywhere else. We don't have to change our lives up when these things happen. A lot of times God's not saying, oh, you, I have this, you know this, and I need you to do this. Sometimes he does. Sometimes we have to make adjustments. Sometimes we have to do a lot of these different things. But honestly, if we're just saying God's got it and believe it, and we've been leaving it, living it out, nothing needs to change. We just need to keep going and trust in him. Sometimes living it out is just staying in the silence and knowing he's got it. Sometimes living it out is taking that extra step. But when we take that extra step, are we taking it with not a lot of support, with not that much trust and saying, oh, he might have that, because then we fall? Or do we not even want to take that step and then stay back and just hopefully something else happens? Again, we have to know that God wants everything. He says, deny it, come to me. But he has the right to say that because he's promised that he has it. Do we believe that? Do we trust that? Do we understand that? And the big thing is, why does he let these things happen? That's always going to be the big thing that creeps in our mind. Why we don't want to trust him. Man, yeah, God's got it, but whew, I can't believe this happened. Yeah, I think he does have it, but man, I just, I'm not sure why. I even have to trust him to have it. Sometimes the enemy put things in our life to make us, or just flat out to, te te to tempt us, to make us stumble and fail and give up and blame God and hurt others and hate ourselves and to give Satan that quick victory. As believers, we know he can't take us with him, but he can make our life a living hell, right? And he does it a lot. Because all he has to do is put that little bit of doubt there. On those days where even us strong, mature believers, that doubt creeps in and like, huh, I don't know. Bam. Right there. We know Satan's not out there. Satan's right here. Satan's everywhere. And he can only get in when we let him. But when we put that confidence bare up, he can only do so much. We know bad stuff happens. That is life. But when it happens, how it happens, we need to stand strong and tall and say, God's got it. Believe it out. Sometimes it's our God allowing things in our life to test us, to strengthen us, because he knows what's going to be happening next, to prepare us for the different things to come, to show us uh, we think we're here and maybe we're not. Maybe it's something we just haven't seen yet. We're always so quick to judge, and then God puts something in front of us and says, oh, I just didn't have to deal with it yet. We've all been there, right? It's so easy to look at somebody else and say, I can't believe they had to deal with that. It's vice versa with everybody else. God knows where to put little placements in to test us. God knows little placements in our life to allow Satan to do this, to do that. But it's all for his glory. Charles Spurs, and I'm... I'm I don't remember the exact quote, but he said something on the lines of, God wants us so bad. So when the stuff comes up, it truly has to be there for a reason. Otherwise, he wouldn't allow it. That's so true. We want this life to be perfect and, and everything to go this and that. We have to know it's not going to be there. But a lot of times we try to play God and say, yeah, I know it's, not, I know it's going to be bad, but I didn't want it to be this bad. I knew something had to happen, but, you know, you're God. I went to church this morning, and that shouldn't happen. We try to take a lot of the victories from us, and we got a couple verses that we'll look at that show that's just not how it's supposed to be. If it's in front of us, 
there's a reason for it. And a lot of times we just stop, but we don't know what to do. And then the doubt, it needs to start right there. Man, God's got it. Now what do you want me to do? Amen? In every situation, we can have that confidence. Because it's not just us. The confidence that someone's in charge of it. Somebody else is watching over it. Someone else wants to be involved with it. Someone wants to handle it. And that person is the father that rules over all. That person is the savior that paid for it all. And the one that's just important, but we don't talk about a lot, that one is the spirit that lives in us and lives through it all. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Don't you yourself know that you are God's temple and that the Spirit of God lives in you? This is for us believers. God is living in us, so it is not just us. We forget that a lot. If we live out for God, He comes through, but if we just suppress and stay back, He will. He wants to be in the front. He wants to come out. He wants to help us handle it, as in him handle it himself. But we don't always think that. We don't always trust that. We don't go to that. But we have to realize that whatever we're facing, he is right there with us. We have to have that mindset in every single thing that we do. You didn't walk outside by yourself. You walked out with the spirit in you. God is in the car with you. God is in a grocery line with you. The good, the bad, and everything else. Which is why we can confidently say in every situation, God's got it. You're not the only one that's looking at the problem when you see it. The Spirit's looking right at it with you. You're not the only one thinking about what we're going to do in this situation. The Spirit's like, I've had that handled already. Trust me. You're not the only one that's thinking about the damage and the brokenness and how the heck am I going to fix this? Spirit said, I was there when our Savior died and rose. I think I can handle this. You're not the only one that's worried about the others that you don't think you can touch. He's saying, I had my hand on them before they were born. Do we have that confidence when things come up? We're going to stumble. We're going to fail. Things are going to happen. But do we truly know this God that created this earth, that has put everything in place, that has knitted you that perfectly, that all these coincidences that have happened, this one thing is going to escape him? This one thing is just going to go over his head? It doesn't diminish the pain. It doesn't take that thing away. But it should make it a little easier knowing that at the very end, I know what is in store of me. And no matter what pains and hurts that I'm going to get on this life, there's somebody right here with me taking it with me. Amen? God's got it. It can be your problem or it can be y'all's problem. I'm decent at math, but I think everybody can understand that two is better than one, right? And especially when that other one is God. Mm. Our problems in our life only surprise us. They've been seen before the beginning of time. We're just seeing them now. When we can see them coming for a while or when they are sudden. But I believe when we truly see the sudden problems, we take the second and look at God, he'll show us, I've put everything around that you need. This was sudden for you. This wasn't sudden for anybody else. This surely wasn't sudden for me. I knew I got you to this point. We, we talked about journals before, but I truly believe when we, when we take a step back on a lot of things and just see how we got to this place, the good and the bad, you'll see so much of God in it. It almost makes you like, why the heck am I worrying right now? 
He got me here. There's no accidents. He was watching me the, the whole entire time. Why would I doubt him right now? God's got it. <clears throat> the big things are the worries that we think are going to affect further down our life, not just the instant one. Again, if we know there's a problem today and something's going to happen, but it may go away the next day, then we can kind of brush those off. What about the ones that we think are going to be there for a while? I didn't know I was going to stop preaching, but God did. I didn't know I was going to take this long off, but God did. Put yourself in those situations, those ones where you're just like, man, I had no clue. Maybe you're going through them now. Maybe you already went through them. Maybe they haven't even happened yet. But when you say that question, no, God did. I didn't know the thoughts and the conversations and the things I was going to have to deal with these past couple months, but God did. Did I take too much time away? That's my calling. How the heck can I not stand up here and preach God's word? Just going to quit like that. I mean, you're not really that busy. You can move a lot of stuff around. This probably just confirms that you're not supposed to be up here. Did I come back too quick? I mean, nothing's really changed. Now there's less time I'm spending with Samantha and the kids. You got responsibilities at home. What are you doing, Jimmy? These are ones I've been dealing with for a while. And honestly, I don't think they're going to go away. But I truly thank God that he showed me, even from the beginning, that as long as you're walking with me, everything is okay. I truly thank everyone for the prayers and everything after. If I started thanking everybody, it would be all of you. I mean, I truly, I felt that it makes it so much easier coming back to my church family. And I know God allows me to kind of be free up here, especially in a message like this, the way it just worked out to take the time off to go through this series to talk about what has changed me to my church family, because you guys have walked this walk with me. So I truly thank you. And it's more confirmation that God has had it the entire time. Mm. As long as I'm walking with him, as long as you are walking with him, you can know the present is taken care of, you can trust him from what he's already done, and you can have confidence in that next step forward. Amen? Mm. We both see you and God, me and God. We both see right now we have to trust that he sees then. We both hurt right now, but God sees the relief. We're experiencing this stress together, but he knows and he sees that answer is right around the corner. He can be at the finish line, and he is, but he desires to run the race with us too. Every step of the way. Again, it's not always the big issues. It's not always the small issues. It's any and everything. Do we, do we believe him when the big things come up? The sickness, the addiction, the family issues, the dealing with the kids, divorce, money, death, those big things. Do we have the confidence in him to take care of him when we're right in the midst of it? How about the small things that we deal with every day? We said something wrong. And we know that can go a long way, right? I know better than that. I shouldn't have did it. As much as we're saying God's got it and we can keep walking, we know we stumble every single day. We're going to leave here. We're going to mess up. We're going to stumble. We're going to do this and that because we are sinners. That's just how it is. We don't wash that away like it's nothing. That is what sent our Savior to the cross. But we, he told us he's going to pick us up, wipe us off, and say, hey, I got it. Trust me. The big and the small. The things we keep going back to. Again, that seem to be small at first. But can grow to be huge. <clears throat> like I said, as you know, we're going through 
the uh, series, this has changed me. And I know I haven't said like a verse yet. But that was intentional. Um, so I've known I was going to pre preach for a couple months now. You know, I was coming back, me and Pastor were talking. And so in my mind, I said, okay, there's definitely some verses in my life that have got me through um, that are huge to me that I definitely want to preach on. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 22. Although I'm free from all and not anyone's slave, I've made myself a slave to everyone in order to win more people. To the Jews, I become like a Jew to win Jews. To those under the law, like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. <clears throat> to win those under the law. To those who are without the law, like one without the law, though I am not without God's law, but under the law of Christ, to win those without the law. To the weak, I became weak in order to win the weak. I become all things to all people so that I may be every possible mean, so that I may be every possible means save someone. It's been my life first, quote unquote. Do whatever it takes for someone to see Jesus. So I was going to go there. I'm kind of cheating because I'm giving you a bunch now. So these aren't the main one. But so then I thought, okay, I'm going to go with uh, Genesis 2, or Genesis 12:1 and Genesis 12:4. This has been huge to me. Genesis 12:1. The Lord said to Abram, "Go." Then he gives him a bunch of stuff. Genesis 4. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. When God tells us to do something, we should listen and do it. Amen. Then I was going to go to a more recent one of me that has really helped me out. That is love Matthew 12, or excuse me, Matthew 14, 13 and 14. This is right before John the Baptist was beheaded. When Jesus heard about it, he withdrew from there by boat to a remote place to be alone. When the crowds heard this, they, believed, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd had compassion on them and healed their sick. This is the one who preceded him, the one that baptized him. He was beheaded. Jesus is tired. Jesus is hurt. His spirit is down, if you will. Jesus, God, just wants to be alone. But could he? No. They followed him, a bunch of them. And he turned them away because he was tired, right? No. He took care of them. I don't care how we're feeling or what's going on. If we have a chance to be the hands and feet of Jesus, we do it. That needs to be no matter what and where is going on. Because if he has us that tired, because if he put us in a situation, again, we know he's got it. Amen? That's where the discernment comes in. That's where the spirit in us comes in. Again, we all know we have to rest. We have to do this. But if we're walking and God shows us this, we take care of it in his name. These would have been, a, I would love to preach on them. Again, these are kind of my, my top three, quote unquote. But I just really wasn't feeling it wasn't no super spiritual thing. I just was like, man, I just don't feel the Lord lead me this way. Um, so a couple weeks go by and I'm thinking of, man, I'm so used to pastor being the man he is and has everything in order. I get to know exactly what I'm preaching on. This is the first time I had to kind of do my own and I don't like it. Um, but I realized how easy, I mean, it, you know, it's a lot easier knowing what you're going. So I said, um, okay, a couple weeks ago, I, since I don't know, I probably should, you know, really start thinking about it. So I kind of landed on to talk about God is in, in our weakness. He is strong. Kind of thought I was going there. I love that. And then Dr. Gagnon kind of took that. <sighs> and I didn't know because I was not here that, that Sunday. I was out in Philly. And thank God I watched it online because if I would have went after him... <laughs> We just played the video. Yeah, a lot of what he said. That was it. So God knew. So then I was going, I've been studying the book of James. That's where I've been in lately. And I said, uh, you know what? I'm going to talk about the tongue and the speech. I said, we've been going there. Then that Greg Dreyer guy, kind of not making this up. I was here and he said it. I said, all right, that, uh, that takes care of that. And God pretty much clearly told me, hey, the thing you've been doing, trying to focus on every week you're here and focus on that, don't just change it because you're preaching. Focus on here, and when it's your turn, I'll let you know what to preach on. 
practice what you preach. I said, all right, I'm going to shut up. And I didn't think about it that whole week. I just said, you know what? I'll wait until my week and I'll start thinking about it. So Monday comes after pastor preached last week. Um, I still had nothing. So I'm like, all right, let's start thinking about it. I was going to go to the book of Moses. All right, book of Moses. Book of Exodus. I was going to go through. This is why I took the break. Um, I was going to go through the book of Exodus. I love the just Moses in general, and I was going to kind of walk through his story. I know that's helped me a lot, and I thought that would uh, relate well. Um, but just wasn't feeling that. Um, I was going through some of Paul's books and looking through those, and I was going to go. I knew I wanted to go with God's Got It. The God's been talking to me a lot about that, but I didn't know what verse. And then I was talking to Pastor, and the verses I was looking at, they just still didn't seem right. So I'm back to square one. Thursday's here. I'm like, okay, this is different, but God, you got me up here. So I come up here to get ready for the message, have no clue. Sit down, get comfy and everything. Tablet's dead. My charger is the wrong one, I said. So obviously I don't live that far, but you know when you get comfortable and I was, I was in the spirit, I was ready, had my coffee and my gummy worms, and I was so ready and just so deflated. So I text pastor, I said, hey, you got a charger? But then I found an old one and I said, oh, this works. But then it didn't work and I don't want to text him back. So I said, ah, you know, I'll just, just go home. So I was going home and, you know, of course, frustrated, get to the house. And the whole time I'm thinking, do I just stay home today? Do I do the message here? Do I wait till Friday to kind of do it? I'm just talking to myself, but I get there and I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll leave. I'll come back to the church. And then I get in the car and I'm like, man, should I, should I be going here? I just, I don't know, just talking to myself. And then I see a church sign and it just says church. No big deal, no crazy, nothing. I pass the sign all the time, but I just never noticed it said church. And I, again, one of those things I took, God said, just go to the church. And that conversation on the way up here, just talking to God like, wow, you knew this was going to happen. You knew this and you knew that. Those little things. And I want to stress those little things. Again, it's not jumping up with, you know, oh, I see this bug and this or anything like that. But when you're in the spirit, God will confidently tell you what you need and what you need to do, even when you don't even know where it's going to come from. Even you don't know where to even look for. That conversation up here, it was nothing crazy. It was just God confirming, I have it. Still don't have a message, but God confirming, I have it. I got this. Bring back everything in my mind, how I got to here. Why did I walk through this church one day? Luckily, there was a family that I was able to go to youth group with and started coming up here. All these years, in and out, doing a little bit of everything. Walking with God, walking away from God, walking with God, teenage years, to be able to come back. Served as a deacon before pastor was even here. Did the baptisms a lot, overflowed at one time. It was bad. Um, which it was just a couple of times, probably why they ended it. Um, so many things just got me to this point. The good things, the bad things, the things I've learned, things I went through with my wife, with my kids, with my parents. Just, we all have those stories, right? And we think back and we, we see again the way, the, pa the, the, the path that God has paved for us. We wouldn't have took it if it was ourselves. That's why he does it the way he does. Amen? We wouldn't have took those steps, but they wouldn't have got me here. I wouldn't have went through that when it wouldn't have gave me the confidence. The success is not if this is a successful message. The success is because I'm up here being obedient to Christ. Amen? Yeah. Same with you guys. You guys each, we just talked about it, you eat, we each have something. God has given us something. Some more, some less, but something, right? He puts something in front of us every day, every week. We just walk through it. It's not because of what's going to happen, as in something good. It's because God asked us to do it, and we walk in it and trust that he will take care of the rest. So this was part of my conversation. Then I get up here, and I'm look, I just turn on the computer, and the verse... I'm talking and I'm saying, man, God, you're just, you're just so good. Why? And this and that. And this verse just kind of pops up. Romans 8, 28. It's funny. It's one I go to. I know it. It never crossed my mind. And God said, yeah, because I wanted it to come now. 
Why does God got it? Why do all these things happen? We know God's got it for his glory. We know he's the ultimate purpose. He's the reason why. But why do you allow in this partnership, God? We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. Who are called according to his purpose. It's praise to him. He promises. This isn't no name and claim and thing. He just promises that it will work out. Not the way we want. Maybe not even good, quote unquote, the way we have to go through it. But it's going to work out for the ultimate good. Amen. God's got it. I've been reading a lot of scripture backwards. And what I mean is I see a verse and I've been going back. Why is it there? You know, they say if you see it, therefore, why is it therefore? I've been doing that a lot lately because it almost for me. This is more just me, maybe the same for everybody, but it helps me out a lot to see why we go back to that. And for this one, it, it, when I read this verse, I said, it's so easy for us to maybe say, okay, because I love God so much, he's going to take care of everything. Because he knows how much I do for him. He told me it's going to work out because of what I'm doing to him, what I'm doing for him. To me. So what I was doing is looking at this verse backwards, and I think it puts it in a great perspective for us. Very last couple words. According to his purpose. Matthew 28, 18. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Everything is for his purpose. His authority. I don't care if it said everything works out for bad. If it's his purpose and it's his glory, that's what happens. Amen. It's for him. And because of who he is, and because we know he has authority over here and in heaven, we can trust that. If we want this worldly stuff to happen, then cool, let's trust in the worldly things. Harold, Harold, Herod, I kept saying Harold when I preached. Herod, King Herod, he had authority. He's trying to kill babies and, success, and was successful on a lot. Tried to get rid of Jesus. He had authority on earth. God has authority everywhere. Those battles that you're fighting, which people that may have authority over you on this earth, or maybe they just have that, you know, that trump card. They can say something. They can do that. We all have that that people can make a lot worse. They have the authority here. But we know who has authority on top of them. Amen. That should give us peace. No matter what they're cooking up, somebody's above them watching it. That can overrule everything they do. Who are called. So it's clear Jesus is calling somebody. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you. It's God. Again, the reasons God's got it, because it's him. We're breaking down his character. It's who he is. We can have the confidence in everything because it's him. And he chose us. I appointed you, and I, I appointed you to go and produce fruit, and that your fruit should remain. The good fruit remains. He's calling the ones that are producing the good fruit. Kind of intertwined in these. I want us to see that God is calling us when we are following in the spirit. He's the one that chose according to his purpose. It's God. We know the beginning of the verse. Why do we know? Why do we have the confidence? Ezekiel 12. I don't have the verse here. I'm not sure which one it is. I believe it's, it's in Ezekiel 12, chapter 12. For I, the Lord, will speak whatever word I speak. And it, will be, and it will be performed. I think that's the King James, but I love the way that was said. I am God and I will speak it and it will happen. So because of that, we know. We can have that confidence in him. It's not we think. Again, it's not uh, maybe. It's not meh. We know because of this God, according to his purpose, who chose us. That all things... Mm. God is talking about all things. I think we forget that a lot. 
It's God got this, but again, maybe not that. God, there's no way you've seen what is happening. Last time I checked and said, God went through everything for us. Christ walked through everything. Because he knew you would be going through this right now. It is no surprise. God doesn't work with half things. He's saying all things are going to happen. Psalms 24.1 The earth is the Lord's and all it contains. The world and those who live in it. He can say all things because all things are his. He's created all things. So the good straight paths, the things we love, he made those. Those stumbling blocks, he allowed those to be there too. They're all his, and they're all going to end for his glory. Again, he gives us that partnership to walk with him and say, how do you want this path to go? We know that all things work together for the good. The good. God is good. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Psalm 25, 8, good and upright is the Lord. Psalms 145, 9, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Mark 10, 18, no one is good but God. James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light. God is good. Do we believe that? That should give us confirmation in everything. My God is good and he's got it. God's got it. Hmm. To those, he's talking about a certain group. He's given us the choice. Again, non-believers, they don't have the spirit. It is them. They are walking. It's more, we're hoping. I can do it myself. God gives us the choice. To live in the Spirit or let the Spirit be grieved? He's giving us the choice. It, 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 God can do any and everything. He doesn't need us. He just wants us. It's a partnership. It's love. It's None of this changes him any iota. Again, he can make the robots. He can force the love, quote unquote. He can make everything perfect. There is a reason because when we get to the end of our journey, we see him and want nothing else and say, thank you. I've seen why you've done this. He gives us that choice for those who love God. Again, you can start with that, but why do we love God? 1 John 4.19 We love because he first loved us. We don't know what God, we don't know what love is if it's not from God. That's where love starts. That's where love ends. That's where all love is. Because of that love, God came down. Because of that love, God suffered. Because of that love, God gave away for us that don't even deserve it. You can get close to God when he gives you something and shows you something, but you get really close to God when you see you don't deserve it. Now that is love. And because of who he is, he lets me walk with him and he promises the good. It's going to work out because of who he is according to his purpose. I pray we can say that after every situation we're in. Take that pause, take that break, whatever needs to happen. Don't have to be weird about it. We don't have to be corny. That's what they, a lot of people want to say and see us. It's no, whatever is going on, the good, the bad, whatever it is, just take the second to say, man, I know you got it. It changes everything. The peace that comes over you, when we truly believe it, when it's true for the true God that has given us everything and has gotten us to this point, can confidently say, God's got it. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, 
because of who you are, you're able to say you got it. Because of what you've shown us, we can have confidence that you got it. Some of us aren't even at that point yet. Everything is actually going okay. Some of us are right in the middle of it, middle of it, struggling, because it doesn't make it easier when we say it. It doesn't diminish it at all. And some of us have lived through it, still have some of the scars, but are at the end to see what you have done. Wherever we're at in the process, Father God, I just ask that you show us Give us the confidence in our spirit to know that what coming is coming up, you got it. Everyone hears this message, the devil is hearing it also. We walk out these doors, world is out there, life is out there. Something is going to happen, that is life. We are sinful beings on a sinful earth, stuff is going to happen. You don't promise that there'll be no consequences. You don't promise that everything is going to work out the way we want it to work out. You don't promise that there's not gonna be cuts and burns and scars and the way we have to, to, to walk is going to be smooth. You just promise that you're walking it with us and you're also at the end. So Father God, just strengthen us for when we know those days are gonna happen that we can confidently say in you, you see it and you got it. And I thank you for letting me be a part of it. Let us take this message and go out to the ones that aren't asking you. Just let them see, hey, God was there. I know you don't want him there, but I've seen how he's walked through your life. And I promise you, he will take care of this and he will walk with you if you trust him because of who you are. It all works out according to your purpose. Because you are God and you love us. Take care of us, Father, in any and everything we do. Let us do nothing but go out and glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.